<laughs> oh man, at least they're super aware. <laughs> Animal Crossing, one of Nintendo's most beloved games. Plenty of people picked this slice of life game up and just fell in love. Just like with Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley. I personally am not a huge fan of these types of games. I do, however, get some of the allure to it. From taking basically nothing and building a town or village with your own personal design. It certainly feels like there isn't too much competition in the space. And I am all for people having choices when it comes to their favorite type of genre. The game for a discussion could possibly interest someone that enjoys these games. I had the opportunity to play this game receiving a free key from the dev team through Keymailer. Keymailer is a great site for content creators to request early access and provide exposure for indie titles. Thank you Campfire and Keymailer for the free key. The art style is very cartoony, warm, and has a very fun feel to it, although I feel like it borrows a little too much from the game that has inspired it. The villagers do have that cutesy, cheaty feel to them along with your character you get to create. I cannot say I didn't like any of the visitors. The very first visitor I was able to unlock literally made me say she was really cute. Oh, she's cute though, I do like that character. So they certainly nailed that feel they're going for. The mechanics are rather simple. You're able to walk around, but not really sprint. There is a dash button, but it honestly feels a little bit pointless. Although with this genre, things are meant to be a bit slower pace. There are several things you're able to do. You're able to build homes and craft buildings. You can take some time to go fishing, get some materials to sell through the mining or cutting down trees. Again, with these tasks, they are rather simple, along with gathering ingredients for crafting. The big draw in though, is the villagers have AI and you're able to have conversations with them. They all kind of feel the same when it comes to any type of personality. As shown in the intro, they can recognize some real world stuff, which is a bit interesting, but I imagine we'll reach some limitations with its responses. I did try to see what they will respond to with some more colorful language, but it just copies and pastes the same answer over and over if it doesn't want to respond to something it deems not fit. One big thing that is kind of hard not to notice, other than the obvious Animal Crossing comparison, is the interface. This has mobile game written all over it. One coin. Can you collect more? You've collected 10 Canadian coins! The way menus work and how there are different currencies, not only that, but crafting and building takes real world time. All of the currencies are used for separate mechanics. There are camp coins used for buying cosmetics and items to the general store, gems to speed up crafting or building. There are also vouchers used to upgrade buildings and to acquire new villagers. As of right now, since it is an alpha, you're able to earn everything in game. However, just to know how the gaming industry has been as of late, I can imagine there is going to be a store to buy gems and vouchers all day long. You're able to get new visitors to the island by RNG, the three best letters here in the gaming world. The villagers have rarity to try to make you spin that wheel one more time. On top of all of that, there are a ton of eye-catching effects on the screen whenever you complete a task or level up to really try to pump that dopamine into your brain. The game starts you out by reaching into the island and being greeted by the mayor. I like turtles. You are given the title of Visitor Concierge. Your duties are to talk to villagers, rebuild the island, and keep villagers happy. In all honesty, this game just feels like a bunch of busy work, which I guess that could be said for the other games that are similar to this. The game has a few quests currently to mainly teach you how the game works. It starts off with the most exciting gameplay of all, talking. Yeah, that's the first thing you're shown in the game. This does have AI villagers and one of the main selling points, so I guess that's fair. Your first real task is to try and talk to a villager named Angelina into rebuilding her shop. She won't work with anyone she doesn't trust. So you have to converse with her until you reach an affinity level of 6. This is done by answering a series of questions, which again, the responses are decent and recognizes real world stuff. Once you have built enough trust with Angelina, it is time to try and talk to another villager into rebuilding the shop. His name is Chapo. He talks like he is only interested in money. Only money! But he was really quick to accept a cheaper alternative. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, I guess he's all about some cookies. Finishing up with Angelina, your next task is to get some inventory for the general store. We go and meet Fred, down on the beach. He is willing to start stocking their general store, but he wants some honey first. I had some on me already, and went ahead and gave it to him. Did though. Here's some honey, sir. Uh, oh, I, okay, I did it. However, the game didn't count this as progress, and I had to pick from a very specific beehive to finish this task. We go back to Chapo to get an axe to be able to mine and cut down trees. After learning about this mechanic and that Chapo can be used to remove debris on the island, you're then told you have to keep everyone happy. Yeah, this is when I was like, yep, this is nothing but busy work. Again, I have not played Animal Crossing, so I am imagining a lot of these tasks are somewhat similar. You learn that Steve and Fred had a spat between the two. Oh no, not Steve and Fred. They were the best of friends that I didn't know about. Where's your food truck, bro? Because I want that banana bread. But banana bread! I fucking work, dude! Hell yeah! The fight between the two villagers is all fixed by learning how to fish. It is pretty simple, but most of the mechanics have been so far. After resolving that feud, the mayor asks you to come by the pier. This is where I encountered a bug, and he was not in the location that I was guided to. I'm going to go back over this way, but he's, he is not there, game. However, a quick restart of the game fixed this. You're shown another mechanic, which is a metal detector. This can allow you to find items to sell for extra camp coins. Once you give a bunch of junk to the mayor, he recycles it to rebuild the pier. I asked and he says recycling is lucrative. You sure about that? You sure about that? That is certainly not how it works in the real world. You are then introduced how to invite more visitors to the island. You use vouchers to spin a wheel, and then you randomly unlock a visitor to invite. But you're not able to invite the visitors until there's a bungalow. This is when you're taught how to build things and how other currencies work in the game. Along with having a bungalow, you also have to meet certain requirements to invite a new visitor. There is also a time limit to meet said requirements. You're talking about crafting as well. Once I made my berry cake, I was able to invite a new visitor. And that is what they are. They only stay for a certain time limit, but you get to keep them around by giving gifts or talking to them. Once I completed this quest, there was only one more and it was to invite more visitors to the island. I decided to go ahead and try to see what different rarities were with the visitors. I imagine that the visitors might provide ideas to improve the island or possibly different quests, but at this time in development, it looks like they are just here to invite and talk to. A lot of them have more than one requirement to visit the island, but doesn't really seem to be tied to rarity, so I'm not really sure why they have the rarity there in the first place. This game is in still very early development, and it certainly has the look and possible feel to an Animal Crossing game. Along with busy work that these slice of life games provide, this is not my type of game, but this genre does have an audience. I however cannot recommend this when it finally releases, especially with the possible monetization model this game could have. There is a free demo available right now, so if you like these types of games, it might be something to check out if you have a free hour. After my time with the game, this is how I felt. And the rest of this now is do busy work, talk, and try to keep things happy, all these little furry critters happy, and maybe spend money once this becomes a mobile game, because it's totally going to be that. Okay. I've seen enough.